All right, I'm going to do uh, the section 8.3 for you guys. Um, I know there's kind of a big glare on that whiteboard, but I'm recording these at night and I have to have the light on. So uh, hopefully this line will remind me not to write above it. We'll see how good I do with that. Um, but we're going to have, um, so section 8.3, and that's where we learn how to factor quadratics of the form x squared plus bx plus c. Notice there is no a right here. In other words, the leading coefficient is always going to be equal to 1. So if we go back to our list of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 things, so far we know to always get the greatest common factor first, and then we also learn the last thing, which is grouping. Well, you would think maybe this would fall in on this side at two or three, but it's actually the fourth thing you're going to end up looking for when you throw everything together. And this is called a trinomial with the leading coefficient, meaning the number in front of this x squared, equal to one. Okay. So that's what we're going to factor in section 8.3. Uh, so before we learn how to factor, we'll take a trip down memory lane, way back to chapter 7, and this is what we should already know. Okay. So if I take a binomial times a binomial, so a binomial times a binomial. And they have same signs. So what I mean by that is, for example, if we have x plus 4 and x plus 5, both plus and plus, that's what I mean by same signs. Well, we learned that when we multiply that, we would get x squared plus 9x plus 20. So if you don't remember how to do that, we took, we used the distributive property twice. So x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. 4 times x is 4x. 4 and 5 give us 9x. And then 4 and 5 give us 20. Okay. And then... We also had maybe one like this with the same signs, x minus 7, x minus 3. And we might get something like x squared minus 10x plus 21. And again, we use the distributive property twice to get that. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on that in this video. Well, as you know now, we're going to work the other direction. So we're going to start with something like this and figure out the two factors. So I wanted to point out a couple of things. Um, notice that this middle term of 9 is the sum of these two numbers. 4 plus 5 is 9. The last term is the product of those two numbers. 4 and 5, 4 times 5 is 20. Right, so the middle term is going to be the sum, and the last term is going to be the product of the same two numbers. 7 plus 3 is 10. Now, negative 7 plus negative 3 is negative 10. And then negative 7 times negative 3 is positive 21. So when we work this backwards, and we have... And, and we have um, same signs, and I'll, I'll show you how to look for same signs here in a second, how you would know that they're same signs. We want to find the sum of the middle number and the product for the last number. The way you can tell that your, your two binomials are going to have the same signs is that this will be a plus. Your last term will be a plus. Because if you take, if you multiply same signs, you always get positive, whether it's positive times a positive in this case, or negative times a negative in this case. What the two signs will be, will be what this sign is. Notice this sign is positive. Both of my signs are positive. 
Here we have a negative. Both of my signs are negative. Now, if we take a binomial times a binomial, and instead we have different signs, so for instance, x plus 10 and x minus 7, that should give us x squared plus 3x minus 70. Or if we had something like x plus 2, x minus 9, okay, that should give us x squared minus 7x minus 18. So notice when I had different signs, because this last number is my product, I ended up with a negative both times. So when we think backwards, if I see negative here, I'm automatically going to know that there's different signs. If I see positive here, I'm automatically going to know that they should be same signs. Now, this time, when we multiplied our middle term, it ended up being positive, and this time it ended up being negative. Well, which number is bigger, 10 or 7? 10. 10 is positive. We end up with a positive. Which number is bigger, 2 or 9? Nine? 9 is bigger. It's negative. We ended up with a negative. If you add two numbers with different signs, the one that's the bigger, and that's quote-unquote bigger, like the absolute value, I guess I should say, will be the sign that we end up with in the middle. Okay? So let's actually factor some of these. So let's look at example one. I have x squared plus 14x plus 48. Okay, so we have a trinomial with leading coefficient equal to one. Because I know that, I automatically know that my two binomials are going to start with just x and x. There's, no, there's nothing I can do to get x squared besides x times x. Second thing, this is positive, so that tells me that these two signs will be the same. I don't know whether they're going to be two positives or two negatives. Look here. That's a positive, so now I know they're going to be both positive. Uh, and now I need two numbers that when I add them, I get 14. And when I subtract them, I get, I'm sorry, when I multiply them, I get 48. Well, start thinking about your factors of 48. 1 and 48, add those, you get 49. 2 and 24, add those, you get 26. So it's not 14 yet. Uh, 3 and... 3, 10... 3 and 16, add those, you get 19. So we're getting closer, but we're not there yet. Uh, 4 and 12, add those, and you get 18. 16. 4 and 12 are 16. All right, so it's still not the 14 that we want. 5 doesn't go into it. 6 goes in at 8 times. 6 and 8 is 14. So put in a 6 and an 8, and there are your two factors. If you took the time to multiply this back out, doing the distributive property twice, you would end up with this trinomial. x times x is x squared. x times 8 is 8x. 6 times x is 6x. 8x and 6x is 14x. 6 times 8 is 48. Okay, let's look for our second example. You get x squared minus 2x minus 63. Okay, so this tells me, oh, um, that's leading coefficient equal to 1, so I know that's x and x. Okay, now let's look here. That tells me it's going to be different signs. Okay, you can put plus and minus, or you can put minus and plus, it doesn't matter. Order doesn't matter and that kind of stuff. This tells me that the bigger number will be negative. 
Okay, so because I have different signs, I don't want a sum of two. I want a difference of two. I don't think I emphasized that enough when I went over that. We want a product of 63 and a difference of two. Um, so that is going to be 9 times 7. Now we want to put the 9 with the negative, because it's the bigger number, and then 7 will go here. x times x is x squared. x times negative 9 is negative 9x. 7 times x is 7x. Well, negative 9 and positive 7 give you negative 2. And then 7 times negative 9 is negative 63. So those are our two factors. All right, let's look at a third example. We've got x squared plus 9x minus 10. So again, we have uh, a negative, so that'll tell us different signs. That's a leading coefficient of 1, so I know it's x and x. And we have to say it's different signs. So I'm going to put my plus and minus. So now I need two numbers. Now again, different signs. The difference should be 9, meaning subtracting should give you 9. And the product should still be 10. Well, that's going to be 10 and 1. We want our bigger number to be positive because that, that middle term is positive. So that would be plus 10 and minus 1. Okay. All right, and example 4. We get x squared minus 6x plus 8. So now I'm back to, uh, again, this is going to be x and x. I always want to skip over that for some reason. Uh, we're back to the last term being positive, which means same signs. Look here to see what those signs are. In this case, it's two negatives. So now I need two numbers that have a sum of six. When I have same signs, this is a sum. When I have, I'm um, sorry, when I have a positive here, that means same signs and a sum. If that's negative, that means uh, different signs and a, and a difference. So anyway, uh, the sum, I need to be 6, and the product, I need to be 8. Well, that's 4 and 2. Okay. So I think that was one example of every scenario. Pretty sure. That's what I intended anyway. Um, again, this isn't really like a true homework assignment, but what I want you to do and I'd like you to email me with your answers you get so you can check them. Uh, I would try to do some practice problems. Uh, section 8.3, 23 through 28. So that's just six questions. Uh, you know, try those six. And if you get through those with no problem, you should be good with this type of question. All right, that's it for section 8.3.